Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Gregor Grabarski, the knife designer you know as Kombu. Kambu lives and works in Poland and designs his knives exclusively for best tech. And in an industry that suffers no shortage of new knives, each new Kambu knife has its own unique design language and sort of sense of visual discovery. His knives seem both biomechanical and ancient in feel. They are clearly the work of a man, uh, but exude and sort of elemental nature. That's my, that's my artistic take on it. Uh, starting to sound corny, I know, but like all artists worth their salt, Gregor works uh, inspire conversation and insist that we see each knife a little bit differently and for its own. We're going to talk all about that, but first, a word to the wise. Like, comment, and subscribe, and if you can't finish this episode in video form, remember to download it to your favorite podcast app and listen while you're mowing the lawn or doing the dishes. Uh, if you think what we do here is valuable and you want to help support the show while enjoying interview extras, knife giveaways, stickers, early access to the show, and more, you can do so on Patreon. Uh, the quickest way to get there is to head over to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Now remember, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Do you use terms like handle the blade ratio, walk and talk, hair pop and sharp, or tank like? Then you are a dork and a knife junkie. Gregor, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. Hello, Bobby. Hello, everybody. Thank you for such a beautiful uh, introduction. <laughs> that was smooth. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Could have been smoother if I practiced more, like everything else. But uh, you're I, doing absolutely great. I, I meant what I what I said though. Your work is absolutely unique. Uh, each knife looks different. Each knife looks unique. But each knife you can tell is a kombu knife. Um, so I want to talk to you today about your designing and how you got how you got to where you are. Uh, but first, I want to find out from you, have you always been someone interested in knives? Let's see. Uh, I think uh, as far as I remember, uh, I was about seven years old when uh, I fell in love with, with exactly one knife. <laughs> so yes, it's all my uh, conscious life. I've been... Uh, in love uh, with sharp things, let's say. Okay, well, you said at seven you fell in love with one knife in particular. You got to tell me what yes, knife sir. that was. What was uh, it? Maybe I won't be original, but uh, the spark to get me into knives was uh, a movie, <laughs> classic movie, Rambo, First Blood. Uh, and I was very young, pretty young for this movie, but uh, I had... Uh, opportunity to watch it and I immediately fell in love with uh, John Rambo's knife, OG Rambo survival knife. It was something uh, such beautiful, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my small world. Uh, so, okay, I agree with you. And actually, um, First Blood, the first, the first Rambo movie, First Blood, has been playing on TV a lot here. And so if I sit down late at night before I go to bed and I flip through the channels, I, I've been watching okay. a, a lot of Rambo. And that, you know, each new Rambo movie was a new knife. But that first yes. one, that first, the one, first one was one. the best. Uh, they call it OG Rambo knife. The OG uh, Rambo. Uh, it was uh, Jimmy Lil, I think, yeah. yep. was the maker of o original Rambo knife. And... <laughs> Let's say he, he's one of my heroes. <laughs> he got me into knives. Uh... So um, one thing that I loved, especially about Rambo, but all of those movies and, and movies before that, was also what the knife meant. Having that knife on his belt meant that John Rambo could basically do anything. Yes, um, sir. That's kind of also, uh, you see that in MacGyver, a TV show that was here in the United States. I don't know. If you experience that, yes, I am familiar with uh, MacGyver. <laughs> MacGyver. So he can do anything as long as he's got his Swiss Army knife. 
What yeah. what does it mean to you to have and carry a knife? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, maybe I'm not the best example of a knife user because uh, I don't have many opportunities to use my knife in a hard way. Uh, all I do is cutting vegetables, apples and bananas, and sometimes uh, card boxes uh, and stuff like that. So for me, perfect knife uh, can be uh, uh, not too not too big folding knife, but uh, full capable to work in the kitchen or or to open boxes and cut uh, simple things or simple tasks. But my friends are hard users, mm -hmm. hard users, right? Yes, and they are doing crazy stuff with their knives. So there, uh, everybody has its own perspective, you know, for, uh, for that. You, you know, Gregor, I collect, I have a pretty sizable collection of knives, uh, bigger than many, smaller than many. Um, but I love to collect hard use folding tactical knives. The, almost the harder use, the better. And I like you. You know, I cut bananas with them. I'll cut my sandwich, maybe <laughs> cut a little thread off of my cot. I don't need them so hard yeah. use, but that's my taste. Uh, that's that's just what I what I love. So I look at your designs. Here, let's um, before we start talking about your designs, hold something up so that people who might not know uh, who we're speaking with uh, can see the design, and they will recognize immediately your design style, no doubt. But let's see let's see something. Okay, uh, I have. Uh... My desk stuck with cool things, but I think <laughs> the most uh, popular so far, the most popular models so far, it will be these two. The first one is Ornetta, and uh, this folding mm -hmm. knife was my uh, first collaboration with Bestec knives, and uh, it became pretty popular, so I think <laughs> the guys should... Uh, uh, know my lines from this knife mm -hmm. uh, i can show the second one uh, yeah. is uh, samari this oh, is yeah. uh, from released from last year uh, also from bestec like my uh, all of my designs uh, this is bestec samari s a m a r e that so maybe is... this one mm. and and there is uh, one more uh, Buvaya, maybe mm, you heard about it. Uh, it's uh, the first knife I ever designed. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And uh, the shape is, uh, there is a lot of pictures in the internet, so, so you can see. Actually, this one is a prototype made by Bestec, and we will have a production release of Buvaya uh, in 22. I think in early 22. So these I these are my three <laughs> flag models, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, that represent my uh, lines. Uh, have you been always with Best Tech uh, since the very um, start? The first collaboration I've ever made was mm -hmm. with Custom Knife Factory, uh, but uh, I have so many uh, designs in my sketchbook mm -hmm. uh, that I uh, needed uh, a collaborator, a brand or factory uh, who uh, need uh, quite a lot of knives. And uh, we teamed up with Bestec and it was my like uh, second, uh, second brand I've ever uh, uh, collaborate. And mm -hmm. after two uh, well-made collaborations. Uh, they offered me to work full time as a knife designer, uh, and it's been around two and a half years when I, where I work with Bestec uh. uh, exclusively. Uh, let's say because I'm not uh, doing anything for any other brands and makers right now. So you are living the dream. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, I do. Uh, I do my passion for living. Uh, uh, 
all day long, all night long. So yes, I'm living the dream. I'm honored, blessed, and <laughs> I can't complain. I'm really lucky. Let, let's talk a little bit about your designs and your process in designing. So uh, first, when I was coming up with uh, those flowery words to introduce you with, I was trying to uh, <laughs> think about your your style and and how um, and and what it evokes in me. And to me, I see uh, I see a lot of um, reference to the natural world or organic. Uh, natural world, plant life, I see a lot of. And then um, opposite of that, I see a lot of very futuristic kind of alien organism in there too. Um, those are just- That's right. Those are just what came out from me. What What are you inspired by when you design and what do you? What kind of problems are you trying to solve with your knife designs? <laughs> uh, okay, let's focus on uh, the first part of question. So I can tell you all my, all my uh, inspirations. And uh, the main inspiration for me is the pop culture. Uh, uh, and the most important is computer games. I play a lot of computer games. Uh, I love any kind of computer games uh, I play on my console. Uh, and uh, I see those beautiful worlds and they inspired me a lot. Uh, and a lot of my knives, my knives came from computer games, but this is only first uh, in source of inspiration uh, because I also, ins I also inspire myself uh, in uh, movies, TV series, uh, uh, any kind. Uh, and also, uh, as you said, uh, nature, especially animals and also plants uh, last, uh, last time also insects, in insects. Uh, what, what else? What uh, I think um, architecture, because uh, I love to see uh, cool details in buildings, mm -hmm. and then I can um, use it uh, during uh, designing process. And one of my Big also, you see, there is a lot of that, and one of uh, uh, my big inspirations is also car design. Mm. I love cars, I love to, s I can stare at cars on cars uh, by hours, like the same, like knives. I, I just love how some cars look, and American cars are the one of the most beautiful uh, looking uh, cars. Ever. Which, so, which one? Which one? American, US, oh. US cars. Uh, the flow of um, muscle car uh, yeah. changing to the uh, cars right now. I love it. So, yes, uh, these are my inspirations. And what was the second part of your questions? Well, it was kind what of a... Problems? What yeah. problems? What problems? Yeah, but what I meant is more like design problems, not like uh, what what problems are your knives going to go out into the world and solve. But when you're when you're designing, when you sit down to make a design, first of all, you were talking about sketchbooks before. Were you being literal? Do you do everything by hand first, and then like? Um, yes, I I do a lot of sketching, uh, but I also uh, started to uh, work in uh, computer software. Uh, on vectors, but uh, most of all, our uh, the sketch is first mm -hmm. before I uh, digitalize it. Now, uh, I I could be mistaken, but I feel like I can I can see the um, in in the curves and the organic lines of your knives. I feel like I can almost see the gesture of your hand. You know, everything on your body works in arcs. Your wrist, your elbow. You know, yes. and and if you're just start if you're drawing and you're just flowing with that, I could. It's like I can see. That's that's why they look organic to me. I think I can see your actual <laughs> movement, your gesture in them. Yes, uh, and as you may see, uh, I prefer the curves instead of uh, straight lines. I use straight lines, but uh, the curves are something, you know, belly on blade and. Uh, I like uh, work on curves, on circles, mostly. 
Uh, so when you look at your handles also, so hold up one of your uh, knives, hold up that that first one, or, or uh, I'm sorry, the the um, the most recent one, begins with a B, I'm sorry. Uh, most recent one uh, from those three. Uh... Yeah, the very last one you held up, uh, uh, the one, one, that one, yeah. Okay, okay, gotcha. So when you look at that, and if you could turn it around just so we can see the the, the other side of the handle, the show side handle, uh, all of those, that that ribbing that goes down the center, okay, to me that's evocative of a leaf or something, but you can also see how when your finger wraps around that and grasps, there's really nice grip going on there. So I, I noticed that your knives have a lot of milling in them, like textural milling, not just the, yes. the, the curvy lines. Uh, what what is it about the surface that um, that draws you in that makes you want to do all that embellishment? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I understand good, but uh, if you ask why I am doing so much details on my knives, mm -hmm. uh, I have no answer for this because it's something deep inside. Uh, I I like. Uh, Overbuilt knives, I like over designed knives, overdone some, sometimes, uh, but only if they uh, still look good. Still, mm -hmm. um, they are over this uh, overbuilt, but they are still look good. And uh, I, th I like to complicate things, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of pr process of thinking where sometimes I want to uh, design something simple and clean and classic, but at the end of the day, uh, I have something different, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not fighting with myself and channeling my designs straight to the paper as they, as they are. As they come to you, that's... Y yes, sir. That's sorry uh, for my English. I'm you, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was not trying to correct you there. I was. I'm just. I'm just agreeing with you and talking along with you because I'm looking at these knives and they're, uh, they're all really, you know, they're all really graceful and and beautiful and different. But they all have sort of a menacing factor to them, and that's also something that I like about them. Do you know what I mean by menacing factor? They have. They're a little bit. Please explain. They're a little bit scary, also. They're beautiful okay. and graceful, yes. but they're also a little bit weapony. And <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, I like, uh, beside of folding knives, I, I'm in, also in love in carom beads and some uh, fighting blades. Mm -hmm. uh, I have something called uh, restless hand syndrome. And all day long, I have to flip knives or waving karambits and stuff like that. And yeah. That make me calm and peaceful, you know. So uh, beside of uh, look, I, I always uh, mm, taking care of uh, ergonomy of my knives. Uh, it has to be at least... Uh, pretty ergonomic mm -hmm. so sometimes people uh, see the knife and oh this is so weird uh, it can't be conformed comfortable and then they take it in hands and they uh, realize that it's uh, also pretty good uh, grip and it's good for everyday use yeah i mean i, I can like I look at your knife handles and they, to me, they look comfortable. They just look okay. like, Oh, Oh, I know where my hands are going to go. That's going to, that's going to be great. So you're saying um, uh, that part of your handle design has to do with how it feels. Obviously. I mean, everyone designs yes. a handle so that it is comfortable so you can use it, but it's almost like so that you get the pleasure of, of touching it kind of the way people get the pleasure from opening and closing, opening and closing fidgeting. Yes. The fidget factor is also uh, very, very important to me. Uh, and I also, I always tell uh, Bestec, 
upgrade, upgrade your bearings, upgrade, make mm -hmm. make it flow better, make it uh, drop, shut, closing. I don't know mm -hmm. if I said it. Yep, you, you said know, it right. Uh, opening, closing. It yeah. all have to be a great pleasure, you know, to, to hold it and to play with it. Okay, so hold up this one that you just held up. This one we just uh, featured on one of our shows recently. Yes, then I, I, I have watched this, yes. God, I, I, I adore this. Can you hold it up and talk about it a little bit? Uh, okay, this knife uh, is one of my latest releases, and uh, it's called Nogard. Nogard, Nogard in Polish, Nogard. And uh, it means uh, dragon, but uh, fell backwards, you know, mm. uh, and this is a pretty futuristic knife, uh, very aggressive lines, and uh, this piece uh, is my favorite uh, finish because it's all black and it has a canvas micarta inlay, mm. uh, which was an experiment, and we wasn't sure if it played together, if it worked together, but uh, the final effect uh, is really amazing and uh, I like it very much. Uh, brown micarta with all black, uh, everything else in black, you know, hardware and yeah. pocket clip. Bestek Nogard. That is beautiful. I love that blade shape. Uh, I mean, and, and, and then that's another one. You look at it and, and you can just tell that that feels comfortable in hand uh, with um, the way it's shaped, the contour of the handle. But then you yeah. add you add micarta to it which is a warm material yes, it's, a, yes. it's a material that feels good on your hand uh so to me the 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 contours and the and the choils and the and the curves with the micarta seems like a great combination thank you uh, it was my uh, first uh, uh, impression with micarta because uh, micarta is uh, mostly used on classic knives on simple mm -hmm. handles and uh, I've never seen somebody use micarta on uh, futuristic designs, right. uh, futuristic and complicated. And I think this uh, inlay is pretty crazy. So it was, you know, it, it was a, a try. I like to try new things. I like to try new materials and new matchings on each of my new uh, release. Something I also see you trying new on this. Can you open it up so we can see the blade real quick? Is you were talking before about how you don't like to deal in straight lines. And though it's not a straight line, the edge on this is approaching a straight line. And most of your most of your edges are uh, full bellied and curvy. So this one <laughs> looks like you were, were trying something a little different with that too. Yes. Uh, the interesting fact is that the first... Uh, prototype was a uh, worn cliff it was uh, completely flat yeah and uh, i decided to add a belly i don't know why something told me uh, that it should have a belly and uh, as we know it's always nice to have some belly on night so yeah. it but, ended but up like this it seems like the amount of belly you put on there is oh. is an, is enough yes is enough to keep it so that you get a lot of the benefit of a straight blade. You can still use the tip in a draw yes. cut like a like more of a straight blade. Yes, I think uh, I like this model. I, I have a lot of uh, models to release, but I like this one. Uh, this is my favorite carry so far from the last releases, so yes. So when, when you're designing a knife and you're collaborating with Best Tech, how much... Um, how much do they bring you in on the materials? Do you get to choose the steel and you get to choose the handle? I know they do most of their stuff in, in titanium, so maybe that's not much of an issue, but how much do you have to do with choosing materials? Mm, actually, I have a lot, lot of decisions are on my side okay. uh, because uh, it's like they uh, show me Hey, we have new materials. So we have uh, fat carbon, 10 different uh, patterns. Which one do you like for your designs? And uh, I, I can choose something which fits uh, to the flow and uh, 
uh, how I don't know how to say it. My uh, relationship with Bestec is very smooth. Mm -hmm. We are uh, kind of playing the same cards and they have similar thinking and aesthetics. And uh, we agree with a lot of things. Uh, mm. I am uh, also experimenting with, uh, in each new model, I'm trying to make uh, at least one uh, finish that I've never uh, done before, hmm. just to just to uh, check if Micarta will fit to black black version of uh, knife. And for example, uh, I'm uh, doing uh, some things with wood right now, uh, wooden handle hmm. uh, on a futuristic, also on a futuristic design. You know that, that will be challenging. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we will see a uh, fat carbon uh, and more micarta. So, oh, I can tell you something. I can show you uh, my experiment. Uh, this is Tyra, my latest release. Mm -hmm. And this special version is uh, made uh, from green titanium and uh, red copper. Oh, so it's God. pretty unorthodox uh, connection of materials uh, and so you have titanium with red copper and for example what do i have here oh I, we also work uh, in uh, dress knives limit huh. limit versions huh. so right. tight damascus and damasteel and uh, i also uh, told bestec asked them to make uh, special versions <laughs> this is casta also one of my designs and uh, this baby is uh, with damasteel uh, and Damascus, and that it has been beautiful. limited it has been limited to a uh, few uh, pieces so we are doing uh, everything uh, i'm very open for new materials and yeah hold up bring hold them on <laughs> Bring them up. Hold up the knife, uh, your latest one, the Puko inspired one. Yes, Tyra. Yeah, Tyra. Okay, this is Puko inspired. Yes, sir. So what I think is so cool, and 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 um, all right. What what I think is interesting is that this is obviously a very futuristic knife, um, and yet it's inspired by a very old knife. You know, the Puko uh, yes. utility knife from the Nordic. Uh, yeah, Northern European nations. And uh, so I love this mix of old, uh, given the new treatment like you do here. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and it's you. and it's the same thing while using the micarta and using the wood, experimenting with wood. I love that, especially on these very futuristic knives uh, to do that, to blend, you know, because, you know, what, what you're what you're doing is you're innovating the oldest tool known to man. And what you now you have you have years and years and years of knives to mash up and to you know what was best from here what's best from here well you're designing the future of knives but taking wood and putting it on there i love that idea oh yes i have, that, I, have that book. I forgot about this it, this is also my inspirations it has a lot of beautiful pictures and it's all history of knives uh, in one book so sometimes when I'm looking, you know, for something new, I open this encyclopedia and I always find something uh, interesting. And uh, Puko was uh, something uh, what uh, I want to do for, for a long time. Uh -huh. So I look at that knife, I look at the handle of that, that's the Tyra. I look at the, Tyra, hand, yes. the handle of that and I want to hold it in reverse grip. It looks like it would be so good in reverse. Yeah, It, it holds pretty well, yes. Yeah, it looks very comfortable like that. Uh, it looks comfortable in, in all ways. And uh, yeah, I, I, I like this. I, I think you're onto something with the future and the past coming together. Uh, how about a kombu knife with a bone handle? Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, that's a cool idea, and <laughs> I will write it down and try to think about it. Uh, yeah. You ha uh, are you talking about mammut, mammut bone? Sure, yeah, mammoth, mammoth bone, or mammoth. or yeah, yeah, or jigged bone, like on a like on an yes. old uh, like. Uh, it's one email to Bestek, and we will uh, find out. <laughs> That'd be possible. 
So thank you for an idea. Oh, sure. I, I think it's probably not, you know, th those natural materials are very fussy. And uh, I know bone, you can only go so large without it, without it being an issue. And for mass production, it might be a problem, but we will see. We will okay. See. Yeah. Let me know. So you, uh, in your bio, it says that you uh, have a, a, a past in product photography and graphic design. Uh, how did your graphic design and your product photography evolve to be knife making, to be knife designing? Let's say it was a connection of my uh, three uh, big hobbies, uh, three passions. It was knives, uh, taking pictures, and uh, post-production, like uh, working in Photoshop, uh, doing photo manipulations and stuff like that. And I connected it together uh, by taking photos of knives and then uh, make crazy edits of these photos. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, three in one, three, three things in one. So all day long, uh, I'm taking the photos, designing knives, and uh, editing, uh, working in uh, cool softwares and doing crazy stuff. Well, if you look at, uh, if you go to Gregor's uh, Instagram page, Kambu, on Instagram, you'll see these one beautiful photograph after the, after another. I mean, they're really, your photography is stunning. And uh, you, you, you are, you, yeah, you're welcome. You are your own best advertiser. I mean, you look at these, you look at your photographs and you just want to buy those knives. <laughs> I'm trying to do my best. <laughs> the uh, fun, uh, you know, uh, everything uh, born, uh, everything was born because the lack of uh, something. Uh, I was lacking for the knives uh, I like, so I started to design uh, knives. Uh, but before that, I was lacking of uh, really great photos of knives on Instagram, so I started to uh, make own and. Then I become obsessed about it, and I'm doing uh, a lot of this stuff. So, yeah. Do you have any interest in making them by hand, or are you more just a design? Uh, uh, do you, you are, do are you talking about knife making? Yeah. Would you like to build one yourself? No, I have two <laughs> two, two left hands, uh, and uh, unfortunately, I also have a very uh, fragile. Uh, uh, Problems with ears, you know, mm -hmm. I, I hate noise and uh, in the shop, uh, I have many friends, knife makers, and I'm, uh, I was many times in shop uh, while the process of knife making, you know, and I've never had a feeling to become a knife maker. So I'm very, very lucky because uh, in the past, it wasn't so uh, obvious that somebody who is not knife maker can design knife. Mm -hmm. for factory brand, you know. Uh, so I, I was in the right time, in the right place, uh, with uh, right uh, drawings, and here we go. Well, okay, so we've, we've talked a bit about your design um, and, and your process of designing the knife and how it looks. Um, but, uh, and, and seeing as you're not a knife maker, your relationship with the... Uh, um, with the physics of it and with the technical part, like the lock and the pivot area and that whole thing. Um, how do you, what, what was it like learning how to design for that very technical area? And how do you do that moving forward with new knives? Uh, so uh, I have great people around me uh, and uh, two of them are well known by you. It's Ostap Hell. Uh, and uh, Rafał Brzeski, mm -hmm. two uh, great designers, makers from Poland, and uh, they helped me a lot. Uh, I'm consulting with them some things, uh, but also I have a great uh, 3D engineer in Bestec, and uh, he understands me so well that uh, I can drop him a, a picture and he exactly read in my mind how to do it. I'm really lucky. I don't know this guy. I've never seen him. Uh, he's a 3D engineer, 
but uh, we made uh, over 10 knives together uh, in three years, over 10 releases. So I think it, it's pretty uh, good synergy between uh, uh, the guy uh, like me, uh, who is responsible for uh, a vision, for overall vision, uh, uh, and my team is responsible to uh, make it as smooth as possible and uh, to keep uh, to keep up with original vision you know mm -hmm. they they're doing everything to to uh, to not change uh, my way of thinking about the, this particular design we making it's like you're a uh, musical composer and a conductor and then your team is the symphony or the orchestra and they're uh, interpret they're interpreting your music uh but but they're saying look the yes. oboe the oboe can't do this so we're gonna have to change this design a little bit or change this song so when you send a design to best tech and and your your engineers take a look at their engineers take a look at it uh, yes. Does it ever happen that they come back to you and say, uh, Gregor, this design is just not going to work. We need to do something else. Or do they make little changes in the design, send it back to you and ask you about it? How does that work? Uh, beside of uh, technical limitations, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm sending a design and they're sending back and uh, say that uh, this angle is too sharp or something is uh, too small for uh, you know milling. Uh, but... And that's all. I'm I'm very lucky that uh, they are accepting most of the designs I'm sending to them. Uh, but I am trying to, you know, I'm preparing few designs at home uh, at, at my shop, and then uh, I choose the best one to show them. So I'm not I'm I'm delivering. I'm always trying to deliver my best, and uh, I keep my fingers crossed. If they accept it and they say, let's do it, you know, they like my designs. I'm very lucky because they like it. Oh, yeah. And and for them, you're great because uh, you have a very recognizable style, which makes them very recognizable because you're exclusive to them. So in essence, when they see a com when someone recognizes a kombu knife, they're also recognizing a best tech knife. And that's good for them. It's good for Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, Great oh. to hear that. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, absolutely. Um, so when when you're um, designing a knife, when you're when you're actually sitting down to do the sketch of a knife, do they ever um, come to you? Well, do they ever come to you and say, "Look, uh, Gregor, we need something. We need a clip point this season, or we need a tanto absolutely. this season." Okay, absolutely. I can do something for order. No problem. Uh, but I will do it uh, at the end of the day. It will be done my in my own way. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they can su suggest me something like a blade shape or something, but the rest is uh, the rest you. is uh, channeling my lines, uh, and they are mostly staying and become a product. Right, right. Uh, cause yeah, you could see how, um, a knife company like any, like any company in any industry might say, Hey, look, uh, front flippers are getting really hot. Uh, we need a, we need a front flipper to define our brand. And since we have a designer who design defines our brand, um, Gregor design us a front flipper, you know, I could see how they can do no that. No right? problem. <laughs> uh, I have two front flippers, uh, on the way. Uh, I have all, all, also uh, kind of axis lock uh, in the in the preparing. Oh, cool! And uh, no problem. Everything is uh, possible. You know. So, what are your what are the trends you like? For uh, for me, um, for for instance, I'm not a huge fan of front flippers. Some of them are great, and some of them are disastrous. Like um, Ostop Hell's uh, um, uh, Met Metamorph. Metamorph, very what? great front front flipper. Yeah, beaut beaut everything about that knife is great. Uh, but when I got it, I was trying all sorts of fancy tricks, and I kept stabbing my. So that it was not a it was not a uh, problem. It's not with the comfortable to to play. It's not comfortable to play. It's it's you can you have to learn it. Yeah, it's so not intuitive. What are the trends that you really like, and what are the trends that you dislike? Uh, 
um, uh, in a in the case of um, opening mechanics mm. mechanism uh, i like multiple multiple uh, opening methods mm -hmm. uh, and this is uh, a sample when you can uh, open uh, you can spidey flick and do a lot of uh, different uh, whatever you want <laughs> you know yeah. so this is my favorite my favorite knife is a uh, trend for opening is one more than one method okay then i'm satisfied what about uh, uh, what about locks what kind of locks do you love best uh, i love uh, best uh, frame locks frame locks okay okay because you I, mentioned you're working on the axis on an axis yes. lock project that'll be cool to see that will be my first uh, i don't know how what to expect i used to have in my collection a uh, few benchmates so i i know uh, how it will uh, work it's a great uh, fidget factor mm -hmm. but uh, we will see how uh, strong this mechanism will be because a lot of people doubt in doubt in strange of uh, this lock, uh, and I, I have uh, for me the best one is uh, classic frame lock. Uh, it's very strong. It's uh, you know the best thing that has been uh, invented so far, uh, and I like to mostly all my designs are are frame locks, titanium frame locks with steel inserts. I think uh, ha I think having a kombu knife with uh, an axis style bar lock is going to be a, I think it'll be a revelation uh, because <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Well, because you know I know that fidget factor is part of what goes into your designs, and um, having that new uh, way of doing things on such a on on a futuristic design, I think will be uh, I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> So what other kind of, what other kind of, um, like, do you have any, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, uh, designs on making a fixed blade. Do you do fixed blades at all? Do you have any other gear or other types of bladed things you'd like to design? Mm, yes, absolutely. I have, uh, designed, uh, a lot of, I have a lot of sketches of uh, fixed blades. Uh, and we also, uh, me and Bestec, uh, we have prototype a uh, few fixed blades, but uh, now we focused on folding knives because uh, there are some problems with uh, shipping fixed blades from China. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's going on, but they decided uh, to uh, focus on uh, folding knives. The same situation was with OTFs uh, and with something else, but uh, that's that's why I don't have, still don't have a best tech fixed blade. Yeah, probably a <laughs> lot of lot of legal issues around the world selling uh, sending knives to different different places. How, how was I how? Know. How was the um? How was it for you um, with the worldwide pandemic and with uh, uh, supply chain issues and you know worldwide commerce slowing down? How did that affect you as a knife designer? Um, being honest, uh, the first pandemic was uh, the most fruitful time for me as a designer uh, because uh, I was scared like everybody else but uh, the, my uh, my scare do not paralyze me but force me to do more uh, and i don't know why but i have a very good flow in drawing new things and a lot of my upcoming design uh, uh, are post pandemic uh, uh, post pandemic knives so uh, that was a very good boost for me mm -hmm. uh, uh, and i didn't slow down uh, be, uh let's see uh, we had scheduled uh, our first blade show that was uh, for for me it had to be a first blade show in 2020 and uh, now we are two two blade shows uh, cancelled mm -hmm. uh, and 
I was uh, supposed to make some traveling. And uh, as everybody, uh, we are not traveling uh, so far. And at least for us, there, is, there was no show until uh, the first uh, pandemic. So I, see, I saw you guys this year on, uh, on Blade Show, on your uh, US shows, and I was so excited. Mm -hmm. Man, I would like to be there. But uh, I'm really uh, hoping for the best, and uh, I'm already vaccinated and waiting for Blade Show to fly uh, to US for Blade Show 22. Yep, June keep, in keep Atlanta. My fingers, keep my fingers crossed. So, well, I, you know, it makes sense to me that you said that uh, during the 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 first blush of the pandemic, it was your most fruitful time because a lot was happening then. First of all, a lot of people were home online buying knives. I was one of them, <laughs> and yes. uh, so, so there was a market that you know market demand. But also, if you're feeling anxiety you know, general anxiety from what's happening in the world, and you're an artist, you're you're naturally going to channel that anxiety through your artwork and, you, and, and you know, makes, oh, make a lot of work. Absolutely right. I feel anxious almost every day because I, I put a huge pressure on myself uh, because I'm a perfectionist and it's a disorder and uh, it's... It's hard to not feel anxiety when you always want to do better. I'm never happy. Uh, I'm never happy 100% from what I do. Well, that's that's another sign of an artist. You know, you're excited about what you're doing. You're making your work, and then finally, when it's done, you look at it and uh, you just are thinking about what you're going to do next, and thinking about all the problems in the last design and how. You, I mean, yes, I would imagine. Yes. I, I don't, I don't design knives professionally, but you know, I've done plenty of art, and that's frequently what happens. You're excited about something, and then just as it's drawing to a close, you're like, "I'm so done with this. Uh, what, <laughs> yes. I'm, what I'm going to do next is the real one." Absolutely. Uh, uh, sometimes I have a situation when I uh, get the shipment with prototype, and I look at this and say, "No, no, no, this." It's a piece of shit. And then I go to sleep and wake up next next uh, morning, look, take a look at this prototype and say, no, it's, it's okay. I'm pretty happy, but I'm never happy 100%. So yeah, well, I, I... Uh, I believe the best is yet to come. My dream is to... to or maybe it's better to not feel 100% uh, satisfaction because that's push uh, oh, yeah. the person to try harder, you know, to, to get out of the zone and search for new things. If you're um, satisfied now at whatever age you are now with the beautiful knives you're designing, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, you're, you're designing some really unique accomplished designs but think about if you're if you're still if your dissatisfaction keeps up and you keep designing better and better think of what your knives are going to look like when you're 75 years old designing i mean they're, they're they will they will have they will have achieved so much because of that dissatisfaction keep driving you you're gonna be making swords by then but still <laughs> who knows yeah I'm, I'm i'm open for new experiences so uh <laughs> Hopefully, I will be able to see something, to draw something in the age of 75. So, yeah. uh, yes. Let me, let, me ask you, let me ask you this, Gregor, and, and this, uh, I don't mean to, to pry or get personal, but do you ever think of taking, uh, taking your show on the road yourself and having just kombu knives out of Poland? Is that something you'd ever do? Uh, yes, uh, it was uh, the, the first plan. Uh, was to uh, few years ago, few years ago, because I was working uh, nine to five uh, as a graphic designer in advert agency, okay. and uh, the last few years I, I absolutely hated everything in this job, uh, and I was uh, side cutting with knives, doing uh, it at night and stuff like this. Uh, and my first plan uh, was to 
earn some money from collaboration and make uh, my own uh, OEM, right? Mm -hmm. OEM, uh, my own communized. But I wasn't uh, ever even thinking that Bestec will uh, make me such a good proposition for for full time job. And being honest, it's the perfect situation for me because I hate uh, all marketing stuff. Uh, I uh, I know how to do it, but I really struggle doing it. Uh, and I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not the guy that love to count, to yeah. do this stuff. And uh, thanks to Bestech, I'm 100% focused on my creative work. And this is perfect uh, solution for me. I see guys hustling with their brands, OEMing. Uh, they are doing great, by, but uh, I see that they are putting amount of uh, work into that. It's pretty exhausting to have everything on your own. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, my opinion. That's my. Uh, and you got to make that business work. And so your life becomes all about making that business work, not necessarily about making knives I, or, or that I would imagine that is the struggle because what you really want to do is spend all your time being creative because that's your, that's yes. your God given gift. But uh -huh than to figure out how to make it work as a business, especially if you're not a business guy, is gonna take even more time, <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah, that does uh, seem like a nice setup. It looks like I could earn uh, more money doing it on, by myself, but uh, I have really great life right now. And I let's say I, I don't need uh, more. I don't need to, to, to to take everything by myself. And I have great team uh, and I feel pretty good for the future with Bestech. So as a knife designer and as an already accomplished knife designer, <clears throat> but someone who's got you know many, many, many more years and knife designs in his future, what is the, what is your, what is the design that you're dying to make someday that maybe you, you don't even think you can do right now, but someday down the road, you really want to make a great design of what knife or what would that great design be like? Uh, actually, it's a pretty hard question uh, because I don't have uh, uh, one special design I want to do. Uh, let's say that I have already uh, made about 10 models with best tech and another 10 is uh, on the line so uh, i have many different models for for upcoming years and none of them is my opus magnum okay i don't know where where the roof is and i'm still you know searching for that Oh, I like that answer. Uh, one thing I might suggest, uh, I know you're not taking requests, but it'd be very cool for you to make a, a, okay. a, a very large knife. Um, what was the name of your clip point that came out a couple of years ago? Nice big Bowie. F Fanga. Yes, yes. Fanga. F Fanga. Yeah. Uh, that, oh God, I, I really like that knife. Um, and I like the size of that knife. That's what, a four and a half inch blade? Yes, it's pretty big. I don't know, yeah. but it's pretty big. It's, uh, I have middle-sized hand, and look, this knife is... Ah, that is, that is so cool. So it's my bigger knife so far. So uh, what, what, what I'm getting at is there aren't too many people designing large folders, but I feel like your work translates into large well. Let me show you something. Oh, okay. I like that. Oh, I love it when people get up and they go and they get something... To bring back because it's always something cool okay okay <laughs> i'm back and okay. here is something I, I wasn't supposed to show this but uh, this one is pretty large Ooh, look at that and uh, this is a prototype uh so yeah bigger bigger very big knife very wow. heavy i i don't know the measurements but it's, it will be the biggest uh, knife in my uh, lineup. 
That so is tuned. something. That is beautiful. I, nice. uh, it don't have a name, but okay. I will baptize it nice. So, yeah, I, <laughs> I have this. And uh, the other side, uh, I will have a new release. And it will be the smaller uh, knife from my uh, oh, lineup. And this one is called Nuke. 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 Like, uh, uh, it was inspired by computer game Fallout. Oh, okay. And uh, it reminds me a little bit uh, uh, a bomb or something like this. Yes. Uh, uh, hold hold up. The... Knife. Sorry, I'm interrupting well, you, man. But but hold up the hold. Just hold up so we can see the handle on the clip side. Um, yeah, look at that. Look at all of those swirling lines. That it looks just really cool. That handle looks beautiful, and um, I got to say that blade shape and size look incredibly useful. This this no doubt. I mean, a lot of people like the smaller knives. No doubt, people are going to flock to that one. Yes, and uh, I I hopefully it will be legal in some places. Where mm. my other knives are not legal, it uh, it's under three inches uh, blade length. I don't know if it works, but I hope uh, some guys uh, can make a legal carry with that. So, have you found that you have super fans? A lot of people who collect your uh, collect com all your knives. There is a few guys uh, who has uh, full lineups or or five six different knives. And I'm very thankful for that uh, because it's a great support for me. Uh, yeah. But um, I don't have uh, tons of fans. My role, my uh, career is more uh, evolution than revolution. Mm -hmm. I'm doing one by one uh, and uh, gain uh, new uh, new fans, but it's not like. Uh, Everything, uh, I don't know, I apologize, I missed some words, mm -hmm. but it's more uh, evolution. Year by year, it's better and better. And uh, maybe, maybe uh, if uh, we could travel and make some uh, shows, meet people, mm -hmm. that would be uh, better, uh, you know, for me as a designer, because I prefer uh, personal contact than uh, writing. Uh, yeah. yeah. But we will see. Maybe one day I will have uh, a knife uh, which will go viral, and <laughs> then everybody w will want to buy a combo design knife from Vestec. Well, I have no doubt that that's going to happen if it hasn't already. Uh, let listeners and viewers know uh, the best way to keep up with your work and to find out what new designs are being released by you through Best Tech. Uh, please uh, repeat the question. Because... Oh, 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 tell tell everyone who's listening and watching okay. the best way to make sure that they see all of your new work as it comes out, like your Instagram, different ways to contact okay, you and okay. keep up with your work. Uh, so if you <laughs> if you want to be uh, updated to know what new is coming, uh, follow me on Instagram. It's combo K O M B O U, uh, and uh, I'm posting uh, a lot of pictures and and uh, everything what's new will be uh, announced on my Instagram. And also, don't forget about Best Tech Knives Instagram. They also have a lot of my stuff on their uh, account. So, yeah. And thank you for support. Oh, man. For everybody no. who bought uh, my knife. And I think I speak for a lot of us. Uh, thank you, Gregor, for your awesome designs and for bringing something new and unique to thank this you. hobby that we love so much. So it's it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much, Bobby. And you're one of the best in the game. Keep up the great work. So, <laughs> ah, I, I thank you. Right back at you, sir. Take care. Thank you. Thank All you. Right.
The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Well, there he goes, Gregor Grabarski, the designer you know as Kombu, knocking it out of the park with Best Tech. Uh, it, it's a perfect combination. Best Tech makes outstanding knives, and uh, you know they're one of the few outfits out there that could handle uh, Gregor's designs. So unique, so cool, and uh, it was great to meet and talk to him. The second designer from Poland that I've spoken with, we had Ostap Hell on the show. Uh, uh, very interesting culture, a lot of cool uh, knives coming out of Poland. So excited to get a chance to talk with Gregor. Uh, I will be excited to speak with whom I speak with next week. Be sure to check in every Sunday for an interview show here on the Knife Junkie podcast, every Wednesday for a midweek supplemental where I talk about new knives I've gotten in my collection, new knives released to the world, et cetera, et cetera. And then Thursday night knives, of course, where we all get together and hang out right here. Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's it. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying thank you so much for listening. And I hope you join us next time right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Don't take dull for an answer, people. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.